what are we talking about? We're talking about harmony. We're talking about reconciliation, healing, overcoming the past that the Tryon All-Stars had to face in 1949. They couldn't do what I did in 1965. Thank God for that. So here we are. So here, thank you. So here we are now with the Denny's Corporation recognizing what happened long ago as, a, as then, but now the, there's been a bridge and the gap is closing and we can sit down together as we're doing today with the opportunity to be together and the children who will play on this field later on will get to enjoy it no matter what background they've come from. It gives me a distinct honor to recognize a local company, a big company, worldwide company from Spartanburg, South Carolina. I'd like for April Kelly Drummond, head of diversity, equality, inclusion, and multicultural events to please come forward. While she's coming forward, I'd also like the chairman of the board to join us. Good morning. Thank you, Charles and Sam, for the introduction. At Denny's, we don't say play ball. We say it's time for a grand slam. Hey. Thought you'd like that, Charles. I do. <laughs> what a wonderful honor it is for me to be here with all of you this morning for the grand opening of the Harry Delara baseball field. Beautiful, isn't it? This, a round of applause again. I feel so special to be a part of this rich history that dates back to the Tryon All-Stars semi-professional team where many of its players went on to play to, in the National Negro Baseball League. These men poured their heart and soul into the sport, providing this community some great fun and entertainment. They band together even in the face of segregation to play the sport they loved. These men are part of this community's history and have a special place in this country's history today. What's even more special is that now a new generation of young boys and girls can use this field to play baseball and in their own way pay tribute to these great players from the past. I tell you, this place makes me wish I was a kid again. <laughs> now for the re kid at heart, that's right. Now for the reason I'm here this morning, first let me tell you that Denny's is committed to diversity, equality, and inclusion from both within the companies inside and outside. As of right now, we have an 18-wheeler that's going to Texas and different places with a disaster, feeding people, the first responder, as well as the community. We, not, we are nonstop <laughs> making sure that everyone is cared for beyond our four walls. We're putting things into action. For more than 60 years, local communities and families across the country have made Denny's a neighborhood gathering spot. As you know, we call ourselves America's Diner. We're, the proud, we're proud of that heritage, and like any good neighbor, we help support the diverse causes that our communities care about, from education initiatives, minority business conferences, to childhood hunger programs and fundraisers. In fact, we're just kicking off our 10th annual Denny's Hunger for Education Scholarship Program to deserving elementary, high school, and college students around the country. Yes, elementary. Can't forget, that's the way it starts. Right now, if you go on Denny'sHungryForEducation.com, there are scholarships available. We have given over $200,000 each year, and we're very proud and strong that we're continuing to do that, even during COVID time. I can tell you that we have a lot of goodies that are out there at our Denny's booth, so please. We normally have a, a tour that we go visit different colleges and universities. We have a lot of things that was in storage, so we brought them for you to take and to share. I want to say a special thanks to the sculpture, sculptor da David Deming for this outstanding work. I can't wait till you guys see the unveiling of it. So on behalf of the Denny's Corporation CEO, John Miller, our president, Mark Wolfinger, and as you mentioned, Sam, one of our community champions that brought this project to us, our vice president 
of the tax and treasurer, yes, the money man, Ross Neal. I'm excited to today to present this check. Drum roll, please. For $10,000 to the Harry Delara Foundation for the creation and installation of this plaque honoring the Tryon All Stars and baseball field. Congratulations. Here we are. <laughs> you take We're going to grab here? it. You can see that one. April, thank you. On behalf of Sam, the entire board, and all of us here today who will benefit from that generous donation, let me thank you, your CEO, Ross Nell, the money man, and all others at Denny Corporation of all times for a corporation to lean forward and demonstrate its generosity and its commitment to diversity and inclusiveness. This is one of the most impressive acts I've seen of a public corporation in this country. We will not forget it, and we hope that you and your team there will be frequent visitors to Harmon Field. Thank you so much. You know, as I invite our next speaker to the podium, Sam, I wanted just to say that I know you're an athlete, and I know you're a successful businessman, but as I listened to those eloquent remarks, I could not help but think that maybe there's some politics in your future as well, Sam. Um, let, me, uh, let me invite my, uh, my dear nephew, Adrian Delara, who uh, has been a crucial member of the foundation's board. He and his wife, Brandy, have been working around the clock for weeks now to pull together many of the details here that you're gonna see and that you're enjoying here. And uh, I've asked Adrian to say just a few words about what this place meant to his grandfather. Adrian. Thank you, Charles. Before I get started, I'd like to extend my gratitude and a heartfelt thank you to the gorgeous town of Tryon and especially the Honorable Mayor Alan Peoples for his charisma, his support, his unwavering support of my uncle and the board. We just really appreciate it and it's a beautiful day to be here. Thank you all so much. And Sam, I would vote for you, no doubt. I'll even campaign for you if you want. Nice job. So, you know, the gorgeous and poignant invocation that Bruce gave earlier, he, he made a statement about the happiest place on earth. And for Harry DeLara, the Tryon ball field was absolutely the happiest place on earth. As, as Charles said, in the early 50s onward till his death at age 95, we were out here on a regular basis. Uh, literally weeks, days on end, multiple, multiple family photos, hundreds of photographs taken right here in Harmon Field. And I know he's looking down on heaven today, also full of gratitude and humility. He was a very humble man. And in many ways, he was my hero. At age 86, he was the best man in my wedding. And that is a true story. And he absolutely taught me so much about how to live a full life and how to continue to live a life with grace, humility, honor. He taught me the value of friendship, interpersonal skills, a love of baseball, the purpose of baseball, that it was so much deeper than just a ball game. And more importantly, he taught me the value of diversity and inclusion at a very, very, very young age. And I'd like to share a very quick story with you that took place here local in Spartanburg in the early 80s. And just to paint a picture for you, I, I believe it's probably 1982, and my grandfather and I are headed to Heron Circle McDonald's. And as a seven-year-old kid, getting a Happy Meal with the newest toy, whether it's E.T. or Star Wars, was a big deal for a seven-year-old kid. And we're in his Toyota Camry, which has this equalizer with all these glowing lights, and it's really neat, and I'm mesmerized by the technology at the time. And I said, Granddad, this is a really cool cassette tape because it has gold print on it. Do you mind if we put it in? He goes, ah, yeah, that's uh, Frank Sinatra. Go ahead and put it in. We'll play it on the way to McDonald's. And that's kind of how he talked, you know. And we pop it in. We've got about a good 10 minutes to listen to some songs. We go through the drive through I order my Happy Meal, and we're about the third or fourth car in line. And a song comes on. And the song is called Me and My Shadow by Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Obviously, you know about the Rat Pack. 
Him and Sammy Davis were very close. Uh, they were best men at one another's wedding the same way Harry DeLauro was my best man at my wedding back in 1998. And as we're going through the drive-thru, he starts to tell me about the life that Frank Sinatra lived and the stories behind his music. So we proceed to the window, I pick up my Happy Meal, we've got another 10 or 15 minutes back home. He goes, you know, the thing about Frank Sinatra, Adrian, is he didn't just make this incredible music, but he stood for things. I said, what do you mean, Grandpa? You know, again, I'm seven years old. He goes, well, he stood for the right way of living, and he stood for Sammy Davis Jr. He goes, you know why the song is called Me and My Shadow? I said, no, Granddad. He goes, because they're best friends and they're singing about their relationship. And he told me that racism is wrong, that racism is ignorance. And he went on to describe his African-American friends at Sears Roebuck and how he would have them over for dinner and the importance of diversity and inclusion and that segregation and Jim Crow era walls were simply wrong. It just wasn't the right way to treat other human beings. And Again, at the age of seven, I didn't really understand, but he was breaking it down in simple layman's terms about right and wrong, the way to treat people, the value of music and collaboration. He went on to talk about how Sinatra helped desegregate Las Vegas and how he worked with Count Basie and Quincy Jones and Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday and Nat King Cole and that his musicians would receive equal pay and stay at the same hotels that he would stay at. And again, this was all new to me. I was learning more from him than my own elementary school teacher in first and second grade. So when I think about him looking down today in heaven on today's event, again, such a humble man with such a solid, full heart and love for the passion and the community that Harmon Field brings, he would most be proud of this plaque right here of the 1949 Tryon All-Stars. He would have came up with that idea if he was serving on the board for somebody else and he was erecting a park in their honor. And this is probably what he is the most proud of. And he's instilled those values in me, that personality in me, and I would not be the man I am today without Harry DeLara. And I want to thank you for having me as a speaker at today's event. Charles, thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian, for those heartfelt words. Um, many of our Friends and supporters were not able to be with us here today for obvious reasons, travel complications, COVID, etc. A number of them have sent in letters of congratulation. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to invite to the podium two of my fellow directors who have been stalwarts and leaders in this project on behalf of the foundation for, for many, many years. Bill Cummings, my first cousin, and then my wife, Peijing Bill, Please come forward and read a few of these congratulatory letters which we have received. Thank you, Charles. It's, it's my honor and pleasure to share with you three letters of congratulation from both the public and private sector, and lastly, from an all-time baseball great. First one starts, Dear Charles, I would like to extend to you and all those involved in the Harry DeLara Foundation my warmest congratulations on the grand opening of the Harry DeLara ball field. I had the pleasure of knowing your father. He was a remarkable man who faced many challenges, yet always maintained an optimistic approach toward life. We were both strongly attracted to baseball in New York City, although I must point out that he was a Yankee fan and I was, and always will be, a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. <laughs> Harry had a special love for Tryon and for his family. He would be proud to know that his statue is being erected alongside a plaque 